Hi folks, this is Klaus at Top Hydraulics. We will show you today how to remove and replace the convertible top pump on a Volkswagen EOS. Uh, typically this pump will need to be replaced if you have a warning in the dash that says no top operation. And uh, we will show you this warning in this model year 2007. There are only minor changes in the top from model years 2006 through 2016. The pumps are all interchangeable and um, we will show you every single step of what it takes to remove and replace this pump. It's very easy for you for the do-it-yourself to do, to do the job or if you're a shop um, and not sure whether this is something beyond your means, just watch the video and you'll know it's no big deal at all. Let me briefly show you the pump and the tools needed. I'll walk up a little bit closer to the camera. This is what the pump looks like. It is located in the trunk and very easily accessible. You need really only two tools to remove and replace this pump. That is a Torx T25 wrench. I here have a um, T-handle wrench that's particularly convenient to use, but you could also use a, um, a ratchet with a Torx bit at the end or um, any kind of cheap Torx T25 wrench as long as you can get some leverage on it to uh, loosen some screws, it'll work. And a flat screwdriver, flat screwdriver is needed actually when you install the pump just to pull the red plugs out that uh, Top Hydraulics uh, ships the pump with. We ship the pump filled with fluid and that's why the plug so that it's safe to ship the pump. So now let's go to the back of the car and I'll show you where the pump is located and tell you all the details that you need to know. Follow me. So here we are in the uh, trunk of the Volkswagen EOS. Uh, let me pull up the carpeted uh, panel that uh, is above the spare tire. And here you see the hydraulic pump. It is under this gray foam cover. Actually, uh, this car is missing a small bracket that is on top of here that uh, is also easy to remove. So for access to the pump, all we have to do is pull this plastic panel up and then expose the pump inside of this uh, foam housing. To pull the access cover up, you actually, we have loosened it already, it only takes pulling up in all directions. Uh, keep in mind that the uh, this trim panel is normally tucked under the weather seal, so um, you it will pull out of the weather seal all by itself once you start pulling up on all ends. The, um, one of the important things is disconnect the wire for the connector for the interior light here for the trunk illumination. That connector is easily uh, disconnected by pushing two tabs together and simply pulling it out of the light. So here I take out that rear trim panel and now we are almost at the pump. There is another plastic bracket on here that we can uh, pull up on. It's got two little release panel tabs in the rear. You pull those tabs forward. Now you can push down on this and get it out of the bottom uh, mounting bracket as well. And uh, lastly, we take off the foam cover. Now we finally see this hydraulic pump. If you take a very close look at it, it doesn't look too bad at first, but this pump has failed. Uh, you can see that it's pretty rusty. So there has been water intrusion in this uh, car. That is practically the most common failure in the EOS top, uh, that you have water intrusion through the weather seals and the trunk and ultimately this uh, pump drowns in water. A uh, number of components can fail in this pump. In this particular case it was, as I said, corrosion where both the, very likely the motor is bad and temperature sensor, possibly the uh, solenoids uh, as well that divert the fluid. So I will show you very briefly um, 
What these pumps do here is uh, rebuild one from top hydraulics the way we ship them. Uh, you see a fluid reservoir with minimum maximum minimum maximum marker. We ship them filled with fluid. As I said earlier, that's why we uh, put these red plugs on there to make it safe to ship it. There's an electric motor and here's the pump body that has very um, sophisticated inside a uh, bunch of moving parts and valves and uh, obviously uh, the motor turns the inside you create pressure the fluid then gets diverted via the solenoids through the hoses to these uh, 10 cylinders in the EOS uh, top and um, top hydraulics we are at uh, top hydraulics we're certain that we make these pumps better than new inside because we go through every single component these pumps get torn apart completely every solenoid gets tested all seals get upgraded internal moving parts get checked for tolerance and we ship these pumps performing better than brand new ones they will put out more pressure and more flow than you will normally get out of brand out of a brand new EOS pump simply because we are perfectionists. We um, try to make this pump, we do make this pump better than brand new inside. It will never look quite as pretty as a brand new one because we start out with a used pump on which we concentrate on the inside, uh, making the outside perfect. Well, is not possible this year is an average example. If you order core exchange where we ship one from our inventory first, you might see um, some uh, more signs of um, removed corrosion or it could look better than this one. Uh, what matters is what's inside and the pumps that we ship unless they get mistreated should last through the rest of the car's life. Um, next, finally, let me show you how to take this pump out. We have taken the foam cover off the bottom as well and uh, put the pump on a bunch of 2x4s just to make the job of getting at it a tad easier so we don't have to bend down as far. Also, if your pump is at about the elevation of the hoses, that gives you a little bit more room to play with the hoses and pull them out. Uh, so we have electrical connections, one to the motor. Uh, there's a couple of tabs that you push together and pull out the connector. There are three connectors on the solenoids. You simply push a tad towards the solenoid, pull the wire out. Do the same on the next one. You could either do that pushing now with a screwdriver or you get at those particular wires once you have created the room uh, after pulling the hoses out. I'm doing it now just to get them out of the way. For you it's probably easier to get the wires out after the hoses are gone, but I would like to have them out of the view of the camera right now. So now we're down to removing a total of one, two, three, four bolts on this left side, another four bolts on the right side. The way it's done is these Torx T25 bolts. Each bolt holds a couple of hoses. Uh, basically, there is a flange on the hose fitting and uh, the this bolt is holding down that fitting screws it to the uh, pump. Bear with me for a second and I'll show you more detail about it. Um, now these bolts uh, from the factory have a threadle locker in them so uh, cracking them loose at first is uh, takes a bunch of torque so you may actually need a little extension on your wrench or actually use a, uh, s uh, a regular a ratchet that allows for more torque. Now what is important is that these hoses be pulled out one by one and you have to pull straight. You may have to wiggle a little bit but the trick really is to pull straight. Now what I wanted to show you is the way these uh, hoses are seal sealed to the pump hydraulically is they have a little o-ring on here and that o-ring sits tight inside of the aluminum housing where the bolt the way it holds the hose to the pump housing is simply uh, by overlapping this uh, flange and each bolt holds two, house, uh, two hoses. 
Now while I'm taking out these uh, hoses, if you have uh, received your pump first from Top Hydraulics, then uh, we have also shipped you some extra red plugs that you can put straight into the pump at this point, push it in uh, tightly and this will seal the fluid in. Now we have the first hose out. Um, the same bolt also holds the second hose. The next thing I need to explain to you is that every hose has a two-digit number printed on it about an inch away from the hydraulic line fitting. Now this uh, hose here on the top left rear is hose number 32. You, If you watch out you will not be mixing up any hoses because the same number 32 is also printed, not printed, but uh, rather engraved or stamped into the pump right where the hose goes in. So there's, you'll see all these numbers. Uh, here's 32, 31, 52, 51. That's the number of the four hoses in the rear of the pump. Then towards the front uh, are four other numbers that I can't uh, see from here right now. Um, I have removed the one bolt, so now with that I can take out two hoses, then next I remove the next bolt, then the next, then the next, keep pulling the hoses. After the hoses on the left side are off, if you haven't pulled your electrical connectors for the solenoids yet, do it then. After that we will flip the pump down and it'll be a lot easier to get at the other four bolts and pull out the rest of the hoses and we'll show you that in a little bit of uh, sped up movie so you don't have to watch me pulling every single hose. So the red plugs uh, are not a total necessity. That is, if you decide to send your pump to Top Hydraulics first, uh, you're not likely to have plugs that exactly fill the, uh, fit these five millimeter holes. Um, instead, you can simply drain all the fluid from the pump by um, undoing this uh, uh, plug fill uh, nut and uh, thoroughly draining all fluid out of the pump then uh, wrap the pump in some absorbent material, then wrap it very carefully so nothing breaks during shipping and uh, send the pump off to Top Hydraulics to be rebuilt. Or uh, the luxurious version is getting a uh, rebuilt pump first so you can do everything in one go here and practically have your job done here in less than an hour. Now let me move right on to installing the new pump here it is. Now the way it chips from top hydraulic is with these plugs way deep in there. I have already uh, loosened them with the uh, flat screwdriver and uh, pulled them out so they're now in the end easy to just pull out by hand. Um, the uh, next thing is the electric connectors for the solenoids. Let's put, put those on first so that you don't have to fiddle with them in the end. If you look at how the harness is bent, it's pretty clear which connector goes, they, goes where. Basically the red and yellow wire on the bottom 
the uh, red and green wire in the middle, red and blue wire on top. And now let me set this down for a moment and pull some plugs out even farther. Actually, the smart way to start is on the bottom. Let me pull the bottom plugs out first and install the bottom hoses. Oops, you will see a little bit of fluid bubbling and oozing out here. We actually overfill the pump uh, tad when we ship it, so don't worry about losing. Uh, if you're losing only a fraction of an ounce, you're okay. Now you want to double check that you are putting the proper hose in the proper place. We're starting with line 12 on the bottom, then 51, then 21, then 52. So here is number 12. We push it in, then number 51. 51, where are you? Right here. Then number 21. here. That one needs to be pushed a little harder. Then line 52. I almost grabbed the wrong one, but double checked. And here is 52. It goes in here. And while I'm at it, I will put the screws back into place. It's so nice and convenient to do this while the pump is inverted on its motor right now. So one and two. Now if you're taking your pump out and um, not immediately replacing it. Make sure that the hydraulic hose fittings don't get dirty. So you could just put those in a plastic bag and zip, die, zip tie that tight just to make sure the fittings don't get dirty. And one of the number one rules in hydraulics is cleanliness. You don't want to get a whole bunch of dirt into your uh, system because that's not good. It will wear out the pump prematurely. So hose numbers over here. I will actually get a little paper towel here and wipe off what has just come out of the pump that those few drops of fluid. Okay now hoses, hose numbers coming in the rear here are number 22, 31, and 11 and 32. Okay, hose number 22 goes back here. Next is 31. Number 11. And 32. I push in number 32 last here. And put my two bolts back into place. A good hand tight is clearly tight enough. Now I accidentally just pulled out one hose while I was moving the pump around. Number 32. There you are. Go back in. The O-rings on these hose fittings are good. Uh, they don't need to be replaced. 
unless you had completely incompatible fluid in the pump, such as brake fluid, brake fluid in the system would um, very quickly damage the seals in all cylinders, damage the solenoids, and damage the pump. So never ever use brake fluid in your convertible top system. Okay, now um, I will support this pump horizontally because there's not enough room to have the pump sticking up and uh, at the same time stick in the hoses so we go back to having our uh, 2x4s under the pump first let me get my debris out of the way here and rescue my bolts and then rest the pump. Next I will be pulling the red plugs and pushing the hoses in. Okay, so I can take my bottom plugs out already. Let's take out four plugs and pull them, put the matching hoses in. Number 14 on the bottom, number 53 next. Since there's not a whole lot of room, I will actually put... Oops, I need to put one more hose in before I put the next bolt in. So hose number 23, where are you? Down there. Now this is the tightest bolt of them all. Um, it actually holds three hoses at the same time. And I just tighten that before I put in the other hoses so I can see a little bit better what's going on here. Bolt is tight in place. Next hose up is number 54. And that hose has its own bolt so what i said in the very beginning that uh, there's always one bolt holding two hoses was not correct it's correct only on average um, so the hoses on six of these cylinders are each fastened with one bolt per two hoses but um, hoses on the bottom right rear uh, of the pump are a little bit off as I just explained so next is number 24 then number 23 and then number 13 and 34 no hoses left over I've put them all in place so now I just fasten these bolts. There's a bunch of leaning over involved here, so uh, if you're older, you'll probably take a break in between. But altogether, this job really is not bad at all. Okay, wrench, fit my bolt, there we go. And I turn this about 10 turns until the bolt is actually tight. This is the roughest one to get on just because this uh, electrical wire for the pump is in the way. Okay, there we are, finally tight. I connect the pump. It does fit only one way. And I take out my 4x4s, wipe up my mess, get my debris out of the way to keep everything nice and neat-ish. Uh, put the foam under, put the pump in there, and... You may just want to 
uh, try to move your top at this point before replacing all trim. What you do have to remember is that the trunk divider needs to be closed or you have to bypass that switch. Okay, so we have shown you practically in real time how to replace the pump every single step needed. Hopefully you agree, it wasn't difficult at all. And um, if uh, the fluid level in your pump was between minimum and maximum, that means you don't have a leak in the system. And all of this should have been just plug and play. You have a pump from Top Hydraulics that is certain to work and you should be ready to go and enjoy your top. So one more thing, if the fluid level was below minimum, that means you have a leak somewhere in the system. Such a leak could be from one of the hydraulic hoses, more likely it's from one of the cylinders. We have separate videos that show you how to inspect cylinders and replace cylinders. It's all a do-it-yourself job and altogether we can take care of it, providing you convertible top hydraulic parts at a fraction of what you would pay the dealer for new parts, yet we are certain that they are better than new inside and ready to last for the rest of your uh, EOS's, um, what we call service life, meaning the time that uh, it is on the road. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it.